My aquatic children, on this episode of Mark's Aquatics, we will be breeding the Black Widow Tetra. Thank you very much. Hey, what's happening guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Look at those little rainbows go. They're doing extremely well. They've settled in lovely. But what I thought I'd do, we go around to the bench tank because I have been bringing on some other fish. Now, we've got these Widow Tetras. Now, that's a male. And the female is somewhere around here and she is like a little balloon at the moment. There she is at the back. Like a little balloon. Look at that. Absolutely stuffed with eggs. So I thought what we'd do is the tank here spin it around again now this is the dwarf rainbow tank the babies that I took out on the uh, on one of the last videos or the last video I can't remember now and um, I boiled that spawning mop again I've given it a water change and I thought we'd get them spawning in the same water because it's very similar they've been showing signs of spawning in the in the bench tank behind me so this is just slightly softer water so I thought I'd give them a go in here just to see if we can get some eggs off of these guys and catch him spawning first thing in the morning. So um, what I'm going to do, I'll, I'll go through the parameters and that of the tank in the morning as we watch him and see if they spawn so we can keep our eye on them and keep busy talking about stuff while that's going on. Now, right, okay guys, you've got them in there now. Just put them in, big chunky female and a nice little slender male there. Very, very easy to sex apart. And we're going to turn the light off now. So we've got that spawning mop in the middle now. A little bit of debris blown up there. I just moved that spawning mop around. And now what we're going to do, it's late in the evening. Just put them in. Tomorrow we'll talk about the parameters in there. But now I'm going to turn the light off. Put the glass cover on. Keep that temperature in. And we'll see what happens first thing in the morning, guys. Okay? Right, guys. It's first thing in the morning. And as usual, we've got the towels on. So I'm going to slowly remove the towel from the lid first, letting that light come in, and then we're going to remove the front one, which I've tucked under the top, carefully stick that glass back down carefully on the lid, and carefully remove that out of the way. Now then. Right, now I've got my little remote control here, those little Zenzil lights. So I'm just going to turn that on. Turn that on nice and low. You can see one, you can see the little male there. Just hiding under that sponge filter. And I'm just going to keep that light on low for a minute. Until they start to wake up a bit. The female's probably be hiding in amongst that spawning mop somewhere, but she'll slowly come out over time. So when they do, I'll get back as I always do, and we'll see what's happening. Right, I've just upped the game. I've just put in the other, the other pair as well. And I've just acclimated them from the bench tank straight into this tank. And the parameters are just a little bit softer. The waters are just a little bit softer than it was before. We've added half rainwater to this as pH is around 6.8 I think now in here and we're just gonna see what happens they might not spawn these are quite an old these are quite old fish and um, I picked them up from my local fish shop but they are absolutely rammed with eggs as you can see the females big fat bellies on them oh there you go there's a big cloud of eggs there right up by that filter if you see just floating down now look so hopefully now we'll have a big mass spawn over that spawning mop males are chasing away like crazy and they decided we're going to go by the spawn well they're going to go by the filter again with the looks of things they're picking up a couple of the eggs bang there you go another big shower of eggs coming down very unusual that they're doing it by the filter and not over the spawning mop. There you go, another big cloud in the other corner. These are prolific breeders, guys. There you go. Boom, that's where you're supposed to put them. But I think we're going to have quite a lot of eggs. And um, 
it doesn't take much like I say that first light with most tetras just soften that water up a little bit and they'll do what nature put them on the earth to do like I keep saying look at that there's eggs going everywhere there it's snowing <laughs> fantastic stuff and these girls really did need to get rid of some of those eggs because they were so egg bound if you can see they can hardly swim they look more like balloon mollies than widow tetras so I'm going to leave these guys go 26 degrees in the water temperature sorry what a spectacle first thing in the morning get up make yourself a coffee and get your fish to spawn just preload them up with food first like I said for a week to two weeks before if you're having trouble with these with these uh, widow tetras the long fin varieties like these what you can do is you can split them up and you can so many people say that of oh, you know they're not spawning they're not doing this they're not doing that but if you actually split them up and condition them separately put the females in a, in another tank feed them up really heavy look at that there's eggs flying everywhere and um, what they'll do is they'll condition up lovely and then when you put them together love is in the air and they'll be away and um, and this is what I tend to do with some other species that I find a little bit harder to, to get to go is just do this little this little technique and that's just splitting them up then it really does work sometimes with the neons cardinals most fish if you split them up so they're really going for it these guys look at that there's eggs flying everywhere we're gonna have some fry in this tank I couldn't believe it look at that they're absolutely firing them everywhere and I do I get so excited watching this guys I really do ever since I was a kid you know I, I used to get up and it's the first time when you when you breed it I mean even now at my age I'm super excited watching these fish spawning away and um, and when I was a kid when I first started doing it it always amazed me and the first time it ever happened when I first did neons and I spawned neons I was jumping around the room I was so excited because those little eggs were coming down and it was a real achievement you know getting those water parameters right I had under gravel filter in there at the time um, little corner canister filter going a little corner filter with cotton wool in it trying to get the conditions right and I did it and I ended up with about five I think on my first attempt and it was um, it was absolutely amazing and it's still as amazing today as it was all those years ago and it's just something that's hooked I've been hooked myself on it for all these years never gets old and I'll tell you what they really are going for it in this tank this morning one of them's hiding out of the way I don't know where oh no she's gone up the top she's probably having a bit of a rest she was so full up with eggs She's going to have a rest, and those males are just pursuing that other one. And no, it won't be long. She'll have a rest, and she'll join in again. But what the males will do, that when you see them going up alongside them, what they do is they get ready, they angle themselves up, and then that male and will shove against the side of the female. Okay, and now what that does is that squeezes the eggs out, just like if you've ever watched videos on uh, koi carp when the guys or goldfish even breeding goldfish, where they slowly squeeze the sides of the fish and the eggs come out when they're ready or they give them a hormone injection and that will relax the fish and that will release that the eggs and they do the same with the milk from the males and mix them together in bowls it's the same thing they come together bump together and um, and the eggs are released and if you've ever watched wild carp if you've been down your local park in the spring and you've seen big splashes and crashes in amongst the reeds and that'll be the wild carp going up in the, into the rushes into the side squashing together whacking each other together like that and pushing those eggs out and there'll be millions of little eggs all over the reeds I used to like watching that go and walk in the dog around the park and you can listen to them all spawning away in the reeds at the side and you wonder what it is but this is great nice bit of footage for you guys to watch someone said I should be a, a commentator with the voice that I've got and the wife says exactly the same thing <laughs> Makes me laugh. Snooker or something like that. <laughs> well, they're still going. Fabulous stuff. And sometimes, guys, when you put in a couple of males like this, what happens is, is they'll compete with each other as well. As you can see what they're doing there, they're fighting with each other. She's going around the spawning mop, and the strongest one then 
is going to push her aside or push the other one aside and then they're going to spawn bang there you go there's another little cluster of eggs there falling on the um on the top of that sponge filter there just coming down the other one's in the left hand sorry on the right hand side there and she's very very out of puff at the moment she's been very busy laying all those little eggs and you can still see their eggs floating in down now now these aren't as light sensitive these eggs as um, neons but I'd keep the lights dim afterwards if you've got one of these little lights that I use you want to go and pick one up because they're super cheap they're only a, I can't remember how much they were now obviously these were these were free from Senzil themselves but check out their website guys if you want one of these little lights because they are they're absolutely amazing they're brilliant for breeding because they're not very bright even on their highest setting but you can get them nice and dull and you can really set those channel uh, those, those light settings up and down right guys as always I am not going to leave these guys in there too long now we've had some really good releases in there and that's going to amount up to well, here's, here's some more now um, <laughs> that's really going to amount up to some fry and um, they're big spawners these widow tetras they really are when they let some eggs go you could end up with hundreds of these guys you know 500 fry and uh, I don't really want to be bringing on that many oh there we go again and um, lots and lots of eggs in there I'll give you some close-ups of the eggs when I've taken them out later on but she has got a very oh I better get them out they've gone absolutely crazy again look okay then I'm gonna get back to you guys when these are free swimming okay I'm gonna take a little bit of sh some, some more footage of, of the eggs for you if you're because I know the people like I know you guys like to see the eggs and stuff and um, and what I'll do is then I'll get back to you guys when it's free when they're free swimming now if you watch the last video that I did I did one on the uh, I put the the rainbow fish spawned in the same mop and in the same water believe it or not and it just shows you that if you've got a community tank and you've got lots of fish in your community tank and you've got steady parameters in there okay fish will get used to those parameters over time it doesn't mean because a book says it has to be 6.5 you know 4k you know kh and all this kind of stuff that your fish are not going to breed if you haven't got those exact parameters your fish will get used to those tank parameters because you'll see them spawning in your main tank and you'll think hang about it's seven you've got a ph of seven in there at 24 25 degrees and my fish are spawning and that's the reason it's because they're used to their consistency and that those water changes and they get used to it and they will and nature always finds a way and they will breed um it's just some of the harder species just tend to be a little bit more tricky and obviously you've got to soften that water right up for them to to spawn but um a lot of these guys this is the same water as the um as the rainbow fish spawned in which are doing really well now in their tank over there with the shrimps but i think what i'll do now guys i'm going to make sure i'm going to make, give you some close-up footage and then what i'll do is I'll wait till they're free swimming and then we can start feeding them the infusoria and bringing these little guys up as well okay right okay guys you can see there there is absolutely hundreds and hundreds of eggs in there and that's just one little part of the spawning mop and it just keeps going and going no matter where you look you're going to see them and they'll probably be all over the the substrate as well if we can get in that close It's going to be probably quite, quite hard to see on there, but there is hundreds of them. But, well, there's thousands of eggs in there now. I've, I can't believe how many they've got. I mean, she was, they were both very, very laden with eggs when they went in. So um, we're going to have quite a big hatch right here, I would have thought, if all goes well. Keep your lights dim now, guys, and I'll get back to you when these little chaps are free swimming, okay? Okay, guys, it's three days no sorry it's two days after the eggs were laid and as you can see there we've got a lot of activity on the substrate there lots and lots of little wrigglers now these are actually hatching now as I chat to you now they're coming out from under the spawning mop they're um, where they were laid on the, on the on the substrate as you saw the the parents flicking up by the sponge filter there and they're all coming down and all those eggs are on the ground you can see a few little white dots around there's a few little eggs that weren't fertilized there and there's a few little fungus stuff eggs but we don't worry about those too much because they the old fungus will soon take care of them and eat them away and the bacteria will soon eat them away as well but you can see there's lots and lots of little baby fry swimming around there there's little 
black skirt widow tetris so we're gonna have quite a few of those guys i think a lot of the eggs didn't hatch like i said earlier which is probably a good thing or i'd have had about five six hundred of the things i think flying around in here but we're doing quite well so far we've got a lovely little hatch right out i know it's a little bit dim i've kept the lights down a little bit and i've got my marine light on there so it shows like a bit of a blue hue to it so it's uh it tends to show the fry up a little bit easier against that dark grey substrate on the bottom here, so on the sand. But you can see, look at those. Lots and lots of little ones. Now they're gonna be they're not free free swimming yet. They're called like it's what they call like a wriggler stage where they just come out the hatch, they just hatch out the egg, and they have a little mad moment and they swim around, they get that little engine going, and they stick to the side of the glass or um just hang on the spawning mops, hang on the spill on the, on the sponge filters, anywhere they can just stick to the side, and they'll stay there and they'll absorb that yolk sac, and um, and slowly, slowly they'll be wiggling that tail, vibrating that tail away, and that will use up that yolk sac and give them a little bit of strength, and then they'll venture off into the into the mid water then, and all around the place looking for the infusoria which we're going to put in, or you'll find they'll zip up to the surface and float the way they looks like they're they've died and they'll float all the way down head first crash into the bottom and then start up again and shoot off at a different angle so this is this this this, this is the time where you've just got to sit back you've just got to watch them don't go mad don't go bunging loads of food in for, until you see them free swimming and they're strong and then you can start adding that infusoria in okay anyway i'm going to move you back from the uh, from the aquarium now zoom that back out and I'll show you the spawning mop and you can see there's quite a lot of white eggs on there but when you do see the white eggs guys give it the three days because a lot of the times the eggs fall in amongst the uh, the mop and different places like that and you'll get a few that don't get fertilized but you'll get maybe could be 10 20 that fertilize so don't get despondent and think it's it's not it's not worked just give it a few days if it hasn't worked start it again and you've got to just keep persisting okay guys until you get this right it doesn't happen first time every time like i said i've been doing this for many years i know a lot of the little telltale signs the little triggers and things when these guys are about to go but it's very very hard to explain that but once you condition them up and they go that's the best that's the best advice i can give you when you see those females nice and round full of eggs put them in there lower that ph to whatever values that you need for the species that you're trying to breed and have a go just have a go at it and enjoy yourself that's what it's all about it's, it's about enjoying your hobby being at one with it and when it works it's a great feeling it really is anyway when i move back now look you can see it looks like there's absolutely nothing in that tank whatsoever that's how small they are and what i'm going to do is i'm going to get back to you guys when they're a little bit bigger they're a little bit free swimming just like these guys next door are probably all asleep still the lights have just come on but all the sepia tetras are in there and the diamond tetras as well they're all on the bottom all hiding out the way you probably see a few on the base there just hovering around oh there goes one but they hide behind the sponge filters Like I say, it's very early, it's dark in here still, so not the best footage. But there you go, we've got a load more out and I'll give you an update on those guys when they're a little bit bigger and we'll go from there. Anyway guys, thanks for joining in, thanks for following the channel. Subs are going up great, thanks all you newcomers to the channel. And um, as always, your stars, look after yourselves, love you loads and I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now. Just me and my guitar